it's API Days Helsinki again, and this is our second day uh, set of talks. And here is An Hanna Niemi Hukarts from Tieke, Executive Director. And you had, did you have anything to share personally or organizationally or <laughs> otherwise about these remote times that we have been living? I think for me, I don't know, it's not really a tip, but for me, it's been really a pleasure to kind of really reconnect with, especially our uh, older son, the teenager, and like all of us under the same roof, working mm -hmm. sometimes silently, sometimes not so silently here. And, and sometimes, I mean, it's just been a really, really nice uh, takeaway from this time, I think, to be able to, because the teenagers are just going about in the in the city nowadays anyway, all the time. So finally, they were stuck here with the parents <laughs> almost all day long so even if it's just working and doing your own things it feels like it's kind of reconnecting with him so that's been the, the biggest yeah. takeaway for me and you are still talking everybody yes, is still talking yes. <laughs> to each other after that <laughs> yeah I, I i can share that i have a 15 year old son and my husband and we probably seen each other more now than like for some time before and it's mm. a good feeling but hey um so from our kind of personal um, Zen situation to a society situation with data and platform economy, are we ready? I mean, if our teenagers are ready to be stuck at home, then what is the society going to do? Tell us. Yes. So, like like you mentioned, I, I come from TIEG, uh, the Finnish Information Society Development Center. I've been working there since uh, uh, actually December last year, so half a year behind me. And I've been working uh, on the kind of topics of, of data and APIs and especially how to get data and APIs open and how to get them used ever since 2009. So it's a pleasure to be again part of the API days. I think this is my fourth edition. So uh, unfortunately this time it's from Finland and even remotely but uh, it's been a pleasure to be a part of the global community. And um, yeah, at Tieke, uh, it's our mission to build a digitally competent and interoperable information society that can benefit all players of the society. And uh, we've been around since uh, 1981 and uh, we have currently around 50 members. So we are a nonprofit independent association. Uh, so 50 member organizations, from uh, the private sector to public sector, so I'm kind of bringing in all players of the information society. And uh, some of the services we offer are for businesses. Uh, we offer many kinds of valuable services that help them to advance with digital uh, business or utilizing digitalization as part of their operations more widely. And then on the digital skills side, uh, we are really aiming to help everyone navigate the information society, whether it means to they have the skills required to be able to uh, continue working and, and be an active player in that, uh, that part of your life, but then also how to handle the uh, intelligence that is kind of crawling to our homes and, and healthcare systems and so forth. And uh, on this domain of data and APIs, we've been, I mean, I personally have been working quite a long time, but so has Tieke as almost a 40 year old organization. Uh, they've been working a lot on digital procedures in business, especially in logistics and real-time economy and, and working on different kind of data exchange and, and digital documentations and, and uh, the definitions and documentation for that. Uh, we've worked with open data and open data interfaces in Tieke as well, uh, in, in harbors, for example. So in, in kind of uh, in ecosystems where you have multiple players and it's, it's good to have certain kind of set of agreements of, of the formats and, and standards that you use so that the data, data flows and uh, brings efficiency and, and, uh, and benefits for all players in the ecosystem. And uh, some more detailed examples uh, is the e-invoice address register, for example, that is probably familiar uh, any, for, to anybody in Finland who has been billing somebody. Uh, as, I mean, not somebody, but organizations. So it's it's uh, it's the standard for for sending bills between organizations. And actually, I'm very happy to share with you now that this is uh, something that um, we just yesterday signed together with our uh, Swedish partners. Is that this is uh, spreading 
now uh, also to Sweden. So in the future you can be sending uh, e-invoices uh, from between Finnish and uh, Swedish companies as well. And then on the other hand, we, we organize collaboration forums like the AI and Big Data Finland Forum. Uh, we have the uh, messaging service where you can find the standard as, uh, messaging specifications uh, for fields of logistics, for example. And then we try to help and smoothen the, the digital, uh, utilizing digital technologies and data by offering uh, certain um, standard ICT contract templates, for example. But all these digital uh, technologies uh, are not really uh, worth much if we don't have the necessary skills to, uh, to leverage the technologies. So in Tieke, we are also have been working long time already on uh, things like computers, driver's license, and then advancing to, to the kind of uh, examinations for uh, people working with information and, and data. And uh, so we have quite a set of uh, examinations and, and kind of a standard set of skills you need to be, uh, you are required to have to, to actually uh, fulfill the requirements to, for certain examinations. But then we also have uh, tools for testing your uh, digital skills. And now we are advancing to this Mozilla Foundation's open badges as a one way of, of validating and expressing the, the skills that you uh, have. So this is kind of a little bit of, of, of about Tiek and, and kind of where we are coming from to this, uh, this topic. But the main topic was that is our society set for the data and platform economy and the economy uh, word is now here because I thought that maybe it, it, it's something that catches a bit still the, the uh, attention of, of the people uh, the participating in this event. But of course, uh, the, it's at large, we talk about really about the society and the kind of mechanisms that we have when we're interacting with, with between organizations, when uh, collaborating as a, as a citizen in, in, your, uh, in your cities, uh, decision-making processes and so forth. So more at large, how, how well are we leveraging data APIs and platform uh, mechanisms there? First thing I have learned uh, when I started working with, or throughout the years I've worked with open data and getting data used is that we really need to make it as easy as possible to utilize data so that it can create value throughout the society. And I think it's uh, Helsinki, for example, as a city and many cities in Finland and across the world have done great work on this. And I really loved uh, the work uh, New York has done uh, regarding getting data used uh, there by their citizens uh, and the way they see it as, as something that is really a, a fundamental uh, thing that you have to provide to your citizens to ensure democracy, the working democracy. And they, in their, the next decade uh, of open data, they really have put focus on improving the user experience of data and not just uh, the, the, the developers who are very skilled at making this machine readable uh, resource useful but also uh, that the citizens can better benefit directly from the data and make, create meaning out of that. And of course, the here, even though I now said that you shouldn't only focus on developers, we have a long history in Helsinki when I worked at Forum Virium, which is the innovation company of the city of Helsinki. Uh, and we launched um, the, the developer engagement program Helsinki loves developers there to actually very much ensure that the open data would get more widely used and that uh, the city would understand better the, the uh, needs of the developer community and what kind of APIs for example should be opened and, and in which format and so forth and then on the other hand the, the city uh, could get the, the uh, ideas and, and the motivation for opening up data when they would see that there's a demand from the, the data user side. And all these services that you can, for example, find under the Helsinki Region InfoShare uh, data catalog listed, uh, they are one way of making data really valuable when you can find the quickest way to transit from A to B or, or you can uh, follow up the decision-making uh, process and, and the documents in the city, for example. And all these services are created by third party developers. And it's, it's really been great to see how, how big impact these developers can have in the kind of working and functional and, and human centric city. 
And many of them, unfortunately, uh, created many of the apps and services created didn't necessarily have a sustainable business model. And that's why we uh, started uh, engaging companies together, get more uh, businesses to utilize data as part of their services, but also part of their decision making. And here is for those who are interested in the work we did then, uh, some documents. Uh, there's a, uh, one uh, PDF about how the cities can work uh, together with the city, uh, with the businesses towards this open data uh, enabled business. And then on the other hand, we had some brochures about also how to provide interoperable, harmonized, easy to use APIs or even get started with APIs to begin with in cities. So it's still, uh, even though those are a couple of years old, they are still to many uh, parts, very valid documents that I recommend people to check out. One role in, in this society, information society that APIs have is that they can enable interaction. So two way uh, write APIs also can enable citizens to send their, uh, for example, issue reports about potholes in the streets and so forth, or even uh, send uh, events. If they are organizing some events, they can send that kind of information to the city. So I think that's something that APIs can really uh, power in the society at large. One part of this uh, engaging citizens is the citizen science and collecting air quality measurements, for example. And that's something that many cities, Helsinki included, have been advancing with. But uh, to advance with, with getting uh, citizen input or even if it's their sensor measurements, uh, there has to be mechanisms in place for giving consent for using that data, whether you want to give consent to the city to use the data or the measurements you've taken, or you want to uh, provide the consent to uh, open it up for anybody to use, or maybe you want to just open it up to your uh, healthcare professional who can then check that how is your asthma situation developing uh, regarding the, or how is the air quality impacting the way your asthma, asthma is developing, for example. And there the GDPR, of course, uh, sets some very good guidelines to, to the consent and uh, the right uh, the rights regarding the data that you have collected. But then also the, the my data approach is something that I'm not going so much in, in detail here, but I think many of you have heard of it. And it's something that we at the ECA very much believe that is a key uh, enabler of the information society that can benefit uh, the society at large. And uh, there it's really, it's about the human centric approach it uh, provides the cities, uh, the individuals a better control over the data and where it's being used. But then for companies, it provides a mechanism for them to get the consent from the citizens and people and users to, to utilize their data to provide better uh, services to them, better personalized services, for example. And then for society, it can mean uh, mechanisms for providing uh, uh, personal data for research purposes, for example, or even improve public services that are more uh, timely and, and better uh, uh, serving the citizens. And all this discussion and, and the kind of still lacking technology, well, partly lacking technology, partly lacking, uh, lacking uh, mechanisms and, and ecosystems has, of course, led to a lot of discussion that is this kind of data economy in that sense a bit broken and is the lack of trust too big for us to really advance anymore to this direction of my data. And I think there's some uh, articles that or, or documents that I really recommend people to read. One is uh, CITRAS, uh, the Finnish Innovation Fund's uh, the, the policy brief on the roadmap for a fair data economy. And then now even more current one, there are 35 proposals to make European data strategy work. So I think these are something that uh, I really warmly recommend people to check out. One aspect of this functioning, well-functioning uh, future uh, information society is, of course, not just to focus on the human needs and be human-centric and developer-friendly, uh, well, developer-friendliness is, of course, part of this, but how do you uh, advance with uh, data and APIs in a way that is, is kind of automation or robotics or AI-centric? And that's, I think, something that we are more and more looking into and, and having to start tackling 
again, I guess this is kind of where, where it all started with APIs, that it was more between, uh, between machines and not so much thinking of the other use cases. But now, the, uh, to some part, the focus has been uh, shifting more to not necessarily um, human-friendly APIs, but still the human aspect has kind of um, come more, more there. So how do you go back and think that what are the needs or are the needs different when you use APIs just for automation or robotics or AI? And uh, like I said in the beginning, uh, there's a lot of need maybe for new skills and a new focus on how, how the data can better serve the society and its members, not just uh, the developers or that we don't always need first the developers to create something that uh, makes the data understandable then for others. So uh, we've seen the growth of this all kinds of quite easy to use uh, dashboards. So uh, I worked in, in one project that was aiming for this uh, smart city dashboard that would enable both the citizens and the decision makers and the developers to better utilize the data and have a better situational awareness and, uh, and uh, data uh, driven uh, decision making. But uh, other options are, of course, Tableau and, uh, and the local data catalog from uh, Turku region has now put um, a lot more effort to also making the data actionable and understandable without technical skills. So I think this is a very uh, important approach of this functioning uh, information society and data and, and uh, platform economy as well. And here we come then to the skills back, which I talked about and what Dieke very much um, works, works and promotes on is to make sure that we have the adequate skills to not just to work, but to live and actively participate in, in the information society. And we are now currently busy in like looking like how much tweaking and additional uh, examinations, for example, we need for these, these topics of data and, and platform economy as well so that we can ensure that everybody all the players in the picture would understand better the opportunities but also could mitigate the risks of of this development and there are other other players for example there's the data literacy project where where there's a lot more uh, focus put on directly to this topic so of course we are looking into projects like this and it's being inspired by them and, and seeing that well how can we fit that to the finish uh, and European uh, con uh, context. So here is a bit uh, <laughs> not so beautiful picture, but I guess it uh, just tries to uh, uh, kind of uh, portray the fact that how the value creation with data and APIs and, and platforms in general are in the information society. So if we start from the from the from the data and then move on to creating a bit uh, another value layer of data catalogs and APIs and write APIs so that you make the data a bit more actionable for the technically skilled people. And then you start adding uh, concept management mechanisms and uh, different enabling technologies. You as a data provider or data owner provide uh, services and support for, for the developers and uh, the other people who are interested in utilizing the data. And then you add the skills and the awareness of, of these great resources and, uh, and also make sure that the, the players in the society are, are equipped, I mean, tool and tool, tools and device wise, so that they can benefit from these services and, and that developers and companies can create these create digital services on top of this. And you start seeing uh, the different benefits and impact and innovations such as uh, quality of life through uh, smoother transit options or, or also emission cuts when people can uh, be more aware of their transit op choices and, and be a bit more uh, uh, kind of uh, well equipped to make decisions about their life and everyday habits when, when they have the data or the services supporting them. And also to mention the openness that uh, data can, can provide to the society and transparency around it. So a few questions uh, regarding the, the topic of my talk. So uh, are we actually equipped and, and do, we, do we have the needed infrastructure and building blocks in place for information society as we uh, like to see it? 
So one uh, area that requires work is to make sure that the data gets moving, so to speak, and used. So whether it's through opening it, whether it's through content management mechanisms, whether it's through different kind of contract frameworks uh, or new services, uh, it's something that uh, we need to make sure that is, uh, we are advancing with fast. And uh, we have to remember that citizens or all of the players can be data collectors and providers too. So uh, try to think of that as, as widely and openly as possible. Uh, interoperability standard that uh, requires a lot of work as well as discovery of, of data or APIs. Uh, collaboration across silos, uh, organizations and geographical boundaries is required for the, both for the interoperability, <laughs> interoperability issues, but also then to easing the discovery and, and, uh, and making uh, this digital single market happen that we in, in Europe are, are aiming for. Uh, the consent management and advancing with that uh, regarding data, I think it, it creates new roles. So, and it, it creates new kind of ecosystems when, when we need to identify that when is our organization's role a data uh, provider or where are we an operator of the data or are we a data user? And uh, that's something that uh, I don't know if all ecosystems or organizations are yet ready for that. So that's something that uh, should be worked upon. Uh, for all this, for the digital uh, or the information society, one key uh, building block is this digital identities, uh, different kind of um, identification solutions needed based on the case. So uh, sometimes you need lighter versions and sometimes uh, heavier ones. And we should have a good variety of options so that and, and of course the awareness about those solutions so that uh, we can uh, build, build better services for the citizens and organizations. We talked a little bit about the developer experience and, but also then the user experience. If we talk about the data, the data, not so technically skilled data users. So we need marketing about this data, data and, and the services built on top of it, more training, more support. And then as a last point for, for what is important for the case is, is the ethics and, and shared values and agreement on that. So how to tackle the biases, the traceability of uh, algorithms and the decision making processes and transparency regarding those when we are advancing more to this uh, algorithmic based or algorithmic supported uh, solutions. So uh, in that sense, I think that we are not yet all set for, for the data and platform economy as, as a society, if we think of the values that, uh, that we want to withhold uh, with it. But we are, of course, ourselves very eager to work on these topics and also currently looking for partners for diff different uh, European and local projects or other collaborations on these topics of digitalization, interoperability and building these digital skills that I discussed in the presentation. So thank you. That was my presentation for today. Thank you, Hanna. It was a great insight on a lot of kind of <laughs> even even almost historical yes. <laughs> approaches. Like for example, e-invoicing. I, I I started dealing with e-invoices. I think maybe two thousand nine or something. Yeah. Or or and and it used to be very difficult to convince companies to <laughs> even start doing that. So how do you see this? Like what are the actual steps or actual kind of things that you mentioned that those things need to change like for example education and training and, uh, and kind of thinking and everything but like how do you see them changing i mean do you see already those trainings taking in place or those competencies being built or what should happen well i think i think the positive change if you think of like talking about society that for mm. example the state has taken very active role now in making sure that everybody stays on board in, in the digital society. So uh, there's more players who are putting effort to this. I think it's on the agenda of, of unions, of, of uh, the association for uh, Finnish companies or businesses, for example. So a lot of players are now active on it. But then I think maybe for individual point of view, then it, it's uh, like, how do you make your personal kind of mm. learning path or competence building uh, strategy 
and how exactly. do you find mechanisms to especially if, if you are working and, uh, and your time time is rather limited so how you can do a bit more uh, these macro trainings even mm. like very small uh, accurate uh, trainings that help you in yeah, to like micro learning moment yes, <laughs> yes exactly yeah. so that's something that we are now working on and, and uh, mm. I think there is this uh, continuous learning reform going on widely in Europe. Like, how do how do we make sure that you just continue developing your skills while technologies uh, are changing? So yeah, exactly. And, and I, I mean, it it just warms my heart because, like, I, I'm I'm an educator, so <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of the 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 one thing that. Um, it's important to understand that what you need to learn and and then when you actually know what you need to learn then you might find the way how to learn it but yeah. i think that your presentation gives a nice kind of like okay this is your personal to do this this is what you should be like <laughs> checking out that are yeah. you do you know this stuff have you got the the license to drive uh, your computer or <laughs> or do you have license to drive data and platform economy so yeah, yeah. that is a very good point thank you uh, Anna and it was a real pleasure to have you here thank you thank you for the opportunity and uh, if anybody feels there's something that resonates and you want to collaborate with us on please uh, get in touch with me